Well, my name is Camille van Gestel. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of the Waka Waka Solar Lamp, which I'm holding in my hand here uh, right now. It's a super efficient solar LED light, uh, which is designed for the bottom of the pyramid, the base of the pyramid. So the poorest billion on earth who don't have access to electricity. Okay, can you explain a bit how this lamp works? The, the way the lamp works, it's, it's quite simple. Uh, it has a solar panel on the back. So during the day, it sucks up solar energy, and during the night, uh, you turn it around and it, it lights up. So it has, um, it has a small uh, foot which you can place on a, on a bottle, uh, a plastic or, or a glass bottle, or you can turn it around and hang it on the ceiling like this. So it provides for about eight hours of ambient light or uh, about 16 hours of task light on one day solar charge, which is between six and four hours. Okay, so it's a very slick bit of uh, technology. Can you explain uh, how you came to develop this? Well, the, the technology inside is it's actually the heart, the heart of the product. Um, I was in, uh, in Hong Kong uh, uh, about a year ago meeting one of the founders of the chip technology which is inside. They came up with the idea to put a bottle on top, or a light on top of a bottle, uh, an LED light. Uh, I was so enthusiastic about the idea that I, uh, I called uh, my, my, my co-partner, Maurits Groen, asked him whether he would introduce this to Al Gore. Uh, I was thinking if we have Al Gore in the team, then we have a winner. <laughs> um, he said yes. Uh, Al Gore has seen it in the meantime, and uh, we're deliberating now how we how we can cooperate to to bring this to the world, basically. Um, but a little bit more about the chip technology. It and it ensures that the efficiency of the solar panel almost doubles, especially with low light intensities, which ensures that this light will still be working in overcast days or when it's in, in the rain season, basically. So it's a reliable source of light, finally. What sort of advantage would there be uh, for the bottom billion if they would have this lamp? Well, the, the bottom billion, uh, or actually the bottom billion and a half, they don't have electricity. Um, so they rely on kerosene lights, um, which causes six million people burned every year, mutilated for life. Um, they they in, inhale the equivalent of two packs of cigarettes every day as a result of indoor uh, pollution uh, to which kerosene lights contribute significantly uh, and kerosene lights uh, the kerosene is, is very expensive up to 10 20 percent of income is spent on kerosene lights and I've I've heard uh, examples from Haiti where it's up to 50 percent of income spent on lighting only so you can imagine if, if you have a, a solar light which charges uh, during the day free of charge uh, people will be saving a lot of money as well as saving on their health but uh, I assume that uh, saving on their on their expenses will be more important to them in the in the short run. Have you been traveling with the lamp? Have you already initial uh, responses? Well, th the lamp is just out of prototype phase. We are currently in production, um, and within a few weeks from now, yeah, that's a bit troublesome because we're having this interview today. I I have not traveled with the lamp. No. So why don't you say it's the end of April? Yeah, uh, and yeah. we are soon. <laughs> yeah, that's a whole year. So, um, what are the initial responses to this lamp? Well, it currently it's the end of April. Um, the initial responses we've had so far is based on the few prototypes that we have shown to people around the world. The lamp has traveled to the States, it has traveled to India, it has traveled to Indonesia, our prototypes, and we've had uh, really good feedback from it uh, and, and on it. Um, in the next few weeks, we'll be sending out samples to over 50 countries in the world who have shown interest uh, in, in distributing, from distributors varying from distributors to um, uh, NGOs to also uh, uh, government parastatals. So there's a lot of organizations who've shown an interest and, and recognize the importance of, of decent uh, solar lighting for the base of the pyramid. Okay, so this is the technology, but I know you also work with uh, a new sort of organization, uh, you try and involve people in, in the West as well as uh, in, in, in the South. Can you explain a bit about the social dimension of the lamp? We have uh, recently set up uh, the, the Waka Waka Foundation, uh, which is a non-profit organization um, which is aimed at uh, donating lights to refugee camps, for example, where people really don't have anything uh, to spend. Uh, but still we want to ask uh, also people in refugee camps also to um, to do something in return. So we don't want to give out lights totally free of charge. We want to create ownership uh, in order for these people to actually use the light the way it's intended uh, to, to be used. 
Uh, otherwise, they'll be they'll be selling it off or giving it away for for uh, a, a few days of food, which is also important. But the long-term benefits of these lights are then not recognized. Uh, the foundation also. Um, uh, develops an education program for schools in uh, developing countries where we want to teach children uh, what the benefits are of uh, renewable renewable light, renewable energy such as, such as this light for example. We will also teach them about the importance of clean drinking water, uh, personal hygiene, the importance of um, uh, sustainable use of natural resources. So we want to turn these children into uh, genuine climate heroes uh, and we want to teach them the direct and tangible benefits of very simple solutions. And we want to challenge them also to, to come up with their own solutions. Uh, and if we can pull it off, then we want to organize uh, c the competitions in these countries, uh, together with NGOs, local government and enterprises, where we want to actually implement the best ideas created by these children. It has been inspired by a Dutch program uh, from Maurits Groen, actually. Uh, but we want to copy and paste this to developing countries. Okay, so how do you, would you respond to the uh, suggestion that it's an invention from the north uh, for problems of other people? Well, I, I believe that also people who have very little to share, they, they deserve the best the West has to offer, uh, basically. So th they, they really deserve uh, the, the best quality that we can provide for a rock bottom price for the bottom of the pyramid. Um, on, on top of this, uh, also people uh, who live in Africa and in India and Indonesia, they also would like to have an iPhone or a laptop computer, but they cannot afford this. So um, what we've tried to do is, is basically design an iPhone-like uh, solar light. We would, I, I would like to say that, that this light has the aspiration to be the, the, the iPhone uh, among uh, solar lamps. So, and we, we sincerely hope that people appreciate the way we have designed this, with uh, with the the, the high tech technology which is inside, uh, and uh, there is a concern always that things break and then that there is no maintenance. What what is the idea in Waka Waka? Well, there there are a lot of uh, low cost solutions on the market already. Uh, solar lamps have been around for several years. Uh, mainly, the market has been overwhelmed with very low-end quality uh, made in China uh, and a lot of these lights they break down after a couple of months batteries which don't last more than a year uh, so I can imagine that people are really uh, keen on uh, on the quality and uh, they would like to know where do I go with my light if it breaks down well first of all uh, we're not we, we don't want to sell crap to these people we want to sell a high quality product so the first thing is we take care of a very a very good quality test in the manufacturing plant, which is also in China, by the way. Uh, secondly, we provide 1% free of charge to our distributors, as a, um, uh, basically as a down payment, sort of, sort of say, on the warranty conditions. Uh, so if people, if their lights break down, they can simply replace it. They just need to uh, uh, make sure that we need to make sure that they haven't uh, thrown it around or driven a car over it or anything like that. But the lamp out of itself, it won't break down that easily. And what would the cost be approximately? Well, our, uh, our anticipated consumer price level is uh, a price below $10. Uh, currently our cost price is already below this. So uh, once we can cover our, our, our running cost, our, our relatively small overhead, then we would be able to provide this against a little bit over cost price. So that would be seven, eight, nine dollars but then it depends on the distribution channel uh, which uses uh, which is going to distribute these lights that is what determines the end user price so we're trying to work with uh, companies such as coca-cola unilever uh, large fast-moving consumer good companies which already have the distribution network to these rural areas um, which will enable us to provide this light really for the best price possible okay um, so far you haven't used the word government at all <laughs> I have not used the word government at all. No, that is correct. <laughs> uh, we uh, we we would like to uh, be flexible. Uh, we need to move fast with this. We don't want to be dependent on government subsidies. We need to be self-sustained. Um, we would, of course, appreciate government support. And uh, we are talking to various government uh, departments for for support, but we cannot wait for that. 
uh, these people have a very urgent need and something needs to be done now. And uh, we feel if we keep our organization lean and mean, uh, without being dependent on too many third parties, uh, we can realize our dreams. Okay. Where does all the uh, energy come from? All the energy comes from the sun. <laughs> <laughs> but the energy in this, in this project, how is your social energy organized? The social energy, uh, well, first of all... Le let me rephrase, yeah, let me yeah. rephrase. Um, so there's, there's quite a bit of publicity around this lamp. How do you explain the uh, in incredible amount of social energy around this lamp? We've had quite a lot of uh, publicity ar around the, the Waka Waka lamp. Um, I, th I think people recognize that there is a significant problem, uh, but we, what we have done in order to get started with our company, um, we started a crowdfunding campaign on the internet, uh, two different websites, one in the United States, Kickstarter, and one in the Netherlands where we were selling a small part of the company. And we raised about $150,000 within two months. Uh, this has this has gotten us started. We uh, it has is a, it has covered development costs and the first production run, but also it generated an, a, a really a lot of free publicity from around the world. We've had articles from the states to Vanuatu. I had to look it up on a map, uh, but it has been translated in Russian and in Hindi and in Japanese. I think people they they understand that something needs to be done about this tremendous problem that one in five people don't have access to electricity. And I think the way that we have approached this attracts people. And uh, well, I can say I've finally discovered my passion after nearly 40 years. And I, I think it rubs off a little bit. Uh, it goes for the whole team. Um, some people uh, look to Rio for, for a treaty. Uh, is there any relationship to the Rio conference in, in your project? There is a relationship with the Rio conference. Um, uh, first, first and foremost, obviously, the, the theme of the of the Rio conference is trying to find sustainable solutions to eradicate poverty. Well, I, I feel that this is a, a unique solution to eradicate poverty from many different aspects, from many points of view. So that is one thing. Um, the the Dutch platform uh, Rio Plus Twenty, they they have found the Waka Waka light somehow. I th I think Maurits Schoen had something to do with that. I'm not sure. Uh, may, maybe might and higher. I'm not sure about that either. <laughs> but for some reason, we we ate, we ate, we um, uh, we ended up in the top ten um, inspirational projects from the national platform, which is being presented by the Rio platform. Okay. Um, if you look to the world of 2050, do you have a, a, a an idea about what the world could look like in 2050? Uh, what the world could look like in 2050. Um, uh, well, first of all, uh, I hope to be still around to uh, to see that. Um, there are many different views and uh, many different ways to look at that. Uh, if if I look from our own perspective, um, from the point of view of lighting and the point of view of uh, have we been able to do something for the bottom of the pyramid, there are projections that in 2030, still 1.3 billion people will still be out of light, out of electricity. It is our, our, our goal, our, our commitment to make sure that all the 1.5 billion people who, are, who don't have access to electricity today will have electricity in a, very, uh, in a very short period of time. And we hope this can change that. So I hope by 2050, everybody in the world has access to renewable energy. I'm going to rephrase this question, Wouter. Listen. Yeah. So is this lamp showing you a glimpse of uh, another world of 2050? I think the Waka Waka light has shown me uh, a, a window to the future. Uh, and if, you, if you're, you're saying 2050, um, I'm not looking that far into the future yet. Um, I, I think our time horizon is much closer than that. Um, it's our ambition and, and our mission to provide 1.5 billion people with sustainable lighting if possible within the next decade. We are, um, we are ambitious and we believe that there are companies who are able to pull this off together with us. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yeah?